In the previous two videos we looked at how we deliver oxygenated blood to the gut tube. In this video I'll be drawing out the venous drainage of the gut tube and the formation of the portal venous system. If you'd like to draw along, you can find a link to the illustration below. So here we have an entire view of the gut tube from mouth to south, and we need to divide it into those three embryological divisions. The first is the foregut, starting at the mouth and finishing roughly halfway along the duodenum. Then we have the midgut continuing until around two thirds of the way along the transverse colon. And then finally the hindgut completes the gut tube and terminates with the rectum. Each of these divisions receives most of its blood supply from a single unpaired branch of the abdominal aorta. The celiac axis supplies the foregut, the superior mesenteric supplies the midgut, and the inferior mesenteric supplies the hindgut. So what about the venous drainage from these regions? Generally speaking, if we have a named artery going to a region, the vein that comes back will have the same name. So the midgut is drained by the superior mesenteric vein, and the hindgut is drained by the inferior mesenteric vein. However, the foregut is an odd exception. This portion of the gut tube is drained by the large splenic vein. The splenic vein heads across to the right hand side of the abdomen. As it does so, the inferior mesenteric comes up to join it. The splenic vein then unites with the superior mesenteric and forms a large vein known as the hepatic portal vein. The portal vein is a bit odd. Instead of returning the deoxygenated blood to the heart, it takes this blood to the liver. Why do we send this blood to the liver and not back to the heart? Well, this blood contains any nutrients or chemicals that have been absorbed by the gut tube, and this needs to be filtered and cleaned by the liver before it can recirculate around the body. The majority of the gut tube is drained by this portal venous system, but not all of it. At the proximal and distal ends, the gut tube drains into the systemic venous system and returns back to the heart as normal. Where these two venous systems meet, we have connections between them, known as portosystemic anastomoses, and we'll find these at the esophagus and the rectum. There's also a portosystemic anastomosis between the systemic veins of the anterior abdominal wall and the para-umbilical veins that used to drain to the liver. So why do you need to know this? Well, this anatomy becomes really important when you start thinking about a condition known as portal hypertension. In portal hypertension, blood is blocked from flowing through the liver, resulting in increased pressure in the portal venous system. High pressure blood backs up towards the gut tube and eventually reaches the anastomoses. At this point, the blood can be forced into the systemic veins, causing them to distend. These engorged varicose veins are susceptible to rupture, potentially resulting in esophageal or rectal bleeding. Plus, if pressure builds up in the para-umbilical veins, you might also see distended abdominal veins heading out from the umbilicus and looking a bit like a bunch of angry snakes. This symptom is known as caput medusae, or the head of medusa, after the snake-haired gorgon from Greek mythology. So, that completes my review of the venous drainage and my review of the abdominal blood supply. I really hope this has helped clear things up a bit, but if you have any questions or problems, please just get in touch. Other than that, look after yourself, and I'll hopefully see you again soon. Cheers!